Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us to our workers' training of today. Thank you, Lord, for the things we've been learning since we came for this workers' training. Lord, as we come to this session again to exalt ourselves based on the uh, teaching for tomorrow, Lord, I pray that you will minister your word to our hearts and that, Lord, you will bless us mightily, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have an answer. Worship and we exalt your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go back again to our text. We just take a verse of scriptures there. 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. I'll read verse 3 of 1 Samuel chapter 2. It says, They talk no more exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed, and by him actions are weighed. Very briefly, I want to talk on the consequences of our actions. The consequences of our action. You see in our text where we've read, here was a, a, like we learned in our side scriptures review, and I hear exalting the name of the Lord, glorifying the Lord for answers to his prayers. And as part of it, it was exalting the greatness of our God, exalting the, you know, the ability, the, 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 the omnipotency of our God. And one of the things is stated in that song of Anna, the song of praise, was in that verse 3. And that's what I want to really concentrate upon for tonight. Talk no more exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord God of for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. As ministers and workers in the vineyard of the Lord, we must be careful of all the actions we take in life and also in the course of the ministry. For the Bible says that by our God actions are weighed. Our God is a God that foresee beyond the physical manifestations of all that we do or say. He is a God that knows the intentions of man's heart. Everything we have, all the intents of the heart, the thoughts of our heart are all known unto God. We must be very careful of our thoughts. We must be very careful of our desires. We must be very careful of the intent of our heart because, as we are told in that passage, that by him actions are weighed. That's why we are considering this exhortation, the consequences of our actions. Whatever we do in life, whatever actions we take in life, we need to know that it has consequences. What you sow is what you will reap eventually in life and in all eternity. Whatever you plant is what you will reap, is what you will harvest. That's why we must be conscious of all our actions. We must be conscious of all our thoughts. We must be conscious of everything we do, both in life and in ministry, in our interactions with one another. In the things we are doing, we must know that all the things we do in life has consequences. That's why as Christians, and more especially as workers, we must be very careful. Because a time is coming, like we are told in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We are told here that a time is coming in verse 13 of 1 Corinthians. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is, of what sort is it is. That's why we must be careful of whatever thing we do, so that at the end of life we will not suffer loss, and that will not be our love in Jesus' name. That's why as we consider this message, we want to consider this very briefly under three sub-heading. 
point one, we consider the character of dutiful disciples. The character of these dutiful disciples. Point two, we consider the characteristics of a divine of the divine. The characteristics of the divine that is our God. Then lastly, we consider the consequences of our deeds. The consequences of our deeds. Let's go of our deeds. Let's go back again to first Samuel. Our text where we've read before, First Samuel chapter 2, let's go back again to verse 3 there. It says, Talk no more exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Let's just stop there. You see, Anna was exalting us through the song that there are some things that should not be in our lives as Christians, more especially as workers. He says, talk no more exceedingly proudly. We must not allow pride, pride of life, pride of achievement, pride of success, pride of possession, pride of knowledge, Pride, even in the ministry, we must not allow it in our lives. He says, talk no more exceedingly proudly. We, when we talk, there must not be proud. There must not be pride here. The way we react, there must not be pride here. We must, you know, remain humble. In Proverbs chapter eight, Proverbs chapter eight, talk no more arrogantly proudly. Proverbs chapter eight. I will read verse 13. It says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That's the character of dutiful disciples, of dutiful Christian ministers and workers. We have the fear of God, and that fear of God is to hate evil. Then it says pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I it. We must hate pride as workers and as Christians. We must not be arrogant. We must not be people that cannot be corrected. We must not be people that we know will not have you know, leadership over you. It is very well for me. I don't recognize anybody as my leader. God is my leader. Not even the pastor. Not even the, you know, the brother that is managing the area. Not even those that are deputizing for the pastor. No, we must not allow arrogancy. When you begin to bring age, when you begin to bring your possession, your qualification into place, you begin to put that you know, in everything you do. That will lead to arrogance. You see, many people today are destroyed because of arrogancy. Because they are being arrogant. But the Lord is telling us here that we must be people that are willing to be led. We must be people that are willing to be corrected. We must be people that are willing to be shepherd. We must be people that are willing, you know, to have, lead, to have leaders over. That, and I pray that will be our love in Jesus. Jesus name. The Lord is calling us today that we must not allow pride. What drove Satan away from the kingdom of God? It was pride. It was pride. My brother, beware of pride. Pride leads before a fall. It goes before a fall. That's why we must not allow pride in our lives. We must not allow arrogancy in our life. We must remain humble. We must remain lonely. We must have the mind of Christ. Like we are told in Philippians, in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, let this mind, in verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, the mind of Christ, let it be in you. Let the thought of Christ be in you, the character of Christ be in you. He says in verse 6, who be in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no repetition, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That is the mind of Christ. The Bible says we should have in First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I will read verse 6 of First John chapter 2. He that says he abided in him of himself also so to walk, even as he walked. We need to walk like Christ's brethren. That's the character we need to have as Christian. That's the character we need to have as believers. We need to have the mind of Christ. We need to have the heart of Christ. And I pray that the Lord himself will help us. That this mind of Christ we will have in Jesus' name. In First Peter, open your Bible with me to First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Or First Peter chapter 2. For even ye unto, in verse 20, for even, for even ye unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. That's it. We need to follow the steps of Christ. We need to follow, walk in the will of Christ. Have the mind of Christ. If you go back to that Philippians again, Philippians chapter 2, the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 5. He says, let this mind be in you. That's the character we need to have. When he says, talk no more proudly, arrogantly, let the mind of Christ. When you have the mind of Christ, there will be no pride in you. When you have the mind of Christ, there will be no arrogance in you. When you have the mind of Christ, there will be no, you will not be, I, you know, you, 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 you remain humble. You have the mind of Christ. When you look at that word, when it says, let this mind, the mind of Christ be in you, what does that entail? The aim in that mind is, if you write that word mind vertically, the aim in that mind entails the meekness of Christ. Uh, let the mind of Christ, the meekness of Christ. He says in Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 of Matthew chapter 11. Take, in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in us. I am meek and lowly. That is the meekness of Christ. Be meek like Christ. Be lonely in heart like Christ. That's the mind of Christ. And that's what the Lord is telling us tonight. That we need to have the meekness of Christ in us. Have the mind of Christ. The eye in that mind of Christ is the integrity of Christ. Have the integrity, the faithfulness of Christ. What does that entail? Look at it in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I will read verse 30 of John chapter 14. Year after, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and add nothing in me. The prince of this world, that's the mind of Christ, the integrity. Says the prince of this world cometh and add nothing in me. The devil add nothing in Christ. Those, that's it. When you say you have the mind of Christ, you have the integrity of Christ, you want to ensure that there is nothing that the devil is laying accusation on you for as ministers and as workers. You, that you are faithful, you are sincere, you are honest. The integrity, the end in that mind of Christ is the newness like Christ. The newness like Christ. In John chapter 30, look at the new commandment he gave to us. That's what the Lord is calling us to, to have the mind of Christ. He gave us a new commandment, not a old way. You want to do everything in the newness of life. In John chapter 13, I'll read verse 34. It says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another. That's it. That's the newness. The new command, the newness of life is the newness of love, the newness of mind, the newness of attitude, 
That's it, the newness of love. It says that you love one another, and the D in that mind of Christ is calling on, you learn, of, uh, we learn there the diligence of Christ. The diligence. How was Christ diligent when he was here on earth? How did he do the work of God? So when Paul the Apostle was saying, have the mind of Christ, he's telling us we need to have the meekness, the loneliness of heart like Christ. We need to have the integrity, faithfulness, honesty, and sincerity like Christ. You need to have the newness of heart, newness of life like Christ, newness of commandment like Christ. And then the deed there, we need to have the diligence like the diligence of Christ. In verse in John chapter 9, verse 4, it says, I must walk. The works of him that sent me, why it is day, the night cometh when no man can walk. You see that in Christ. The words that compulsion on him to do the work of God. Do you have that diligence? Even when you are tired, are you still doing the work of God? Are you putting your mind into it? Are you putting your soul into it? Are you putting your heart into it? Are you putting everything, your strength, your youthfulness, are you putting everything, your skill, your talent, everything, working as you see yourself, as somebody that had the compulsion of Christ, of heaven upon you. You see yourself as a saint one, that you are giving yourself to the work, that thing that is committed into your hand, to doing the house of God. You are doing it diligently. You are doing it faithfully. You are doing it with all your mind, wholeheartedly. Doing it as unto the Lord. For such a work, the Lord will reward. That's why so you go, you go back to our text again, when he says, talk no more arrogantly. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3, talk no more so exceedingly proudly, and let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. It's telling us here, all we need to do is to have the mind of Christ. The character of dutiful disciples, of the disciples of Christ, is to have the mind of Christ, to walk in the full step of Christ, to walk as he walked when he was here on earth. And to have that mind of Christ, you have the meekness, the loneliness of earth like Christ, that you are gentle. You are meek. You are lonely. No pride in your action. No pride in the heart. No alternate of spirit in you. You have the integrity. You are faithful. The integrity like Christ. You have the newness of art. The new working in the new commandment. The commandment of law. And you have the diligence of Christ. I pray that this character, the Lord will implant in our heart even today in Jesus' name. That's why if we must have this character of Christ, we need to be sanctified. We must come to that second experience of grace where the Adamic nature is uprooted in our heart and the Lord is giving us the heart of Christ, the mind of Christ. Christ died on the cross. He prayed for us and he made provision for us so that we can be sanctified, we can be purified. And I pray, if you are not yet sanctified, the Lord will do this for you even today in Jesus' name. And if you are sanctified, are you growing in that experience? Are you growing to be more like Jesus, to be more meek like Jesus, more lonely in heart like Jesus, more faithful like Jesus, more diligent in service like Jesus, the Lord is calling us, every one of us today, both those who are saved and who are sanctified, calling us to a higher level, to have the fullness of Christ in us. And I pray the Lord will do this in us in Jesus' name. Let's go straight to point two. We consider the characteristics of the divine. The characteristics. You go back to our text again. Let's go back to our text, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge. Let's stop there. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. You see, this song of Sam, uh, of Anna, it points to us again the characteristics of our God. He is the God of all knowledge. Our God is omniscient. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. 
He knows all things. He is the God of all knowledge. Nothing is hidden from Him. He can see through the darkness of all darkness. He can see in the brightness of His light. Our God is a God of all knowledge. If nothing can be hidden from our God, nothing we can hide from Him in First Kings, First King chapter eight. First King chapter eight. I will read verse thirty nine of First King chapter eight. It says there, then yet thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways. Whose art thou knowest? You see, be our God, the omniscient of our God. Whose art thou knowest? He knoweth all hearts. For thou, even thou only, knowest the art of all men. He knowest the art of all the children of men. That's the God we are serving. Our God knoweth all hearts, the art of all men. He knows the heart of everyone. Nothing can be hid from our God. He is the God of all knowledge. In Psalm 44, let's open our Bible to Psalm 44. I will read verse 21 of Psalm 44. He says in verse 21, Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of of the art. You see the characteristics of our God there. He knew it. The attributes of our God there. He knew it. The secret of the art. He knew it. Your intention. He knew it. The thought of your heart. He knew it. That thing you are doing. If you are doing it as it is required, or you are doing it for showmanship, in it the desire, in it your thought, in it your heart. And I pray that the Lord himself will help every one of us. That we come with this understanding that our God is a God of all knowledge. When you have that understanding, you have that fear, you have that knowledge that the God we are serving is the God that sees through all secret. Then you see, there is nothing you want to do under the cover. There is nothing you want to do. You know, you want to do everything as unto the Lord, both in life and in the ministry. That's why we are called that we should do everything as unto the Lord, not as unto all, as uh, as unto the Lord, not as unto men, because He is the God of all knowledge. He sees, He knows the intention of our heart. He knows the art, the things we do, not as men pleaser. That's it. You don't want to be a man pleaser because you know you are serving a God that knows all things. You are serving a God that knows. That's why we are told in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6 it says, Not with eye service as men pleaser, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the earth. Doing the will of God. You want to do everything as unto the law. You want to do because the God we are serving is the God of all knowledge. That's what we are learning today is the God that sees true. You want to do everything you do in life and in ministry. In that work, either the pastor is there or the pastor is not there. You want to do it as unto the law. You want to do it faithfully as unto God. And I pray that the Lord himself will help every one of us. Because the character of the characteristics of our God is the God that is omniscient in knoweth all things. He is the God that is omnipotent, the God of all power. He is the God that is omnipresent, is being before the creation of the world. And it will be even after the war has been destroyed. Is the God that is timeless, is not bound by time. Is the God, the creator of the universe, the, is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the end of all things. Is not a God that was created. 
he is the creator himself. Now when we talk about the characteristics of our divine God, you know, to give us better understanding, I just go through quickly the seven covenant names of our God. So as, you know, when you have these as workers and as ministers, you know, that will deepen your relationship with this God. That will help you, you know, to have more understanding, to go deeper in your fellowship with Him, to appreciate the God that we serve and the God that has called us into the ministry. Number one, He is the Jehovah Jiri, the God that provides, the God our sufficiency. He is the God that can make all things, all that we need. All that we need for life and ministry he is able to provide for us. Number two is the Jehovah Nisi, the God, our banner, the God, our victor. Whatever battle we are facing in life or in the ministry, he is our victor. Let's be rest assured. The characteristics of our God is the God that has never lost any battle. And he will not lose that battle for you that you are going through. I mean, he will not lose that battle you are going through in your life. He will fight for you. And you will come out victorious, triumphant in Jesus' name. Number three is the Jehovah Prince Colonel, the Lord our righteousness. All the righteousness we need for life and in all eternity is in God. All we need to do is to always come to Him, to fill us with more of His righteousness. Righteousness of life. Righteousness of art, righteousness in our thought, let's come to Him. All the righteousness we need is in our God. Number four is the Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. He is the Lord that healed us. He is the Lord that is our healer. Are you sick here today? He is the Lord that healed us. Whatever the sickness, whatever the illness, let's trust the Lord. He will heal you. He will make you whole. Number five is the Jehovah Ra, the Lord, our shepherd. You know, whatever, you know, He will guide us. He will lead us. Are you taking, you know, looking up on to take a decision, a step in your life, in your family, or in the ministry? Seek the face of the Lord. He will guide you. He says, I, the Lord, will guide and He will lead. He will lead you because He is the Lord, our shepherd. Number six is the Jehovah. Shalom, the Lord our peace, the Lord our peace. Are there troubles in your life, in ministry, in your family? He's the Lord that He will give you peace. Are your work, your work, is your work being threatening? The Lord will give you peace. He will give you rest of mind. You know, when we trust the Lord like that, number seven is the Jehovah Shama. The Lord is present. He is present with us. He is the omnipresent God. He will go before us. He will go with us. He will go after us. His power surrounds us. Wherever we go, whatever we do in life and ministry, we need to go with the consciousness that our God is present there. And as His present there, His power is present there. As His power is present there, His glory will present there. And the Lord will do you good. And this, the Lord will do for us in Jesus' name. So, brethren, we are serving a great God. We are serving the God that has called us into the ministry. He is the God that will go with us. He is the God that we fight for. We need to come with that understanding. That's why as we labor for Him, as we work for Him, we want to do everything pleasing unto the Lord. Because we know there are consequences of our action. This leads us to point three quickly before we pray the consequences of our day. If you go back again to our text, First Samuel chapter 2, First Samuel chapter 2, I will read verse 3. It says, Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. By him actions are weighed. By him actions, 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 the consequences of our deeds, of our actions, our actions as consequences. Whatever you sow is what you reap. 
Whatever you plant is what you will harvest. We need to come unto that understanding. In fact, we are told in Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. I'll read verse 27 of Daniel chapter 5. Take it. Thou art weighed in the balances, and I found one thing. Thou art weighed in the balances, my brother. Thou art way in the balances, and I find one thing. Remember, by our God, actions are weighed. It will weigh every action, whatever thing we do, whatever thing we sow, in the vineyard of the Lord, in our own life also, it has consequences. Our actions have consequences that's why we need to be you know we need to be careful we need to be conscious of what we sow in life and in ministry we are told in matthew look at the ways of christ our lord and savior himself matthew chapter 12 matthew chapter 12 i'll read from verse 36 but i say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment, we shall give account even of idle ways. Think about that. He's not just talking of actions now, but Christ is even saying idle ways. To the extent of idle ways, we shall give account of it. That's why we need to be careful. The things that comes out of our mouth, we need to be careful because every idle words, words of no value, words of worthless words that we speak, we will give account of them in the day of judgment. In verse 37, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Thou shalt be condemned. Let's go back again to First Corinthians where we read before. First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. I will read from verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. It shall try the fire. There is a day of judgment coming. There is a day of reckoning coming. Every work we do shall be tried by fire. It says in verse 14, If any man's works abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be born, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Yet so by, as by fire. God will try our work. There is consequence for all our actions. All our work will be tried by God. All our works will be judged by God. That's why we need to be conscious. We need to be careful in the work of the ministry. What kind of work are we doing? In the choir, as you sing, are you doing it as unto the Lord? Or you are doing it out of compulsion. You are doing it to please men. In that work that is committed into your hand, are you doing it? Are you doing it faithfully as unto the Lord? Or you are doing it as unto men? In Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, verse 23, it says, And I will kill a children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searched the ruins. You see, and the hearts. God searched the hearts and the, the intent of our heart. And he says, And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. According to your works. Examine yourself, my brother. Examine yourself, my sister. That work you are doing in the house of God, are you doing it faithfully? Or you are doing it as unto men? Remember, there is consequence 
for your action, for your work, for your deed. Examine yourself. When we talk about these consequences, what does it entail? Number one, there will be damnation. If we suffer loss, there will be damnation. Number two, there will be destruction. Number three, there will be defeat. Number four, there will be disease. Number five, there will be despair, depression. If we are not doing it as unto the Lord. Number six, there will be drought, there will be famine. And lastly, there will be death, physical death and internal death. That's why I want to examine yourself today, the consequences of your deed. You know, you want to come to the Lord. Today is not the day of judgment. There is still mercy at the throne of the Lord. We can come to God today and ask the Lord for mercy. Whatever thing we've been doing in time past that does not glorify the Lord, the labor we put into the work, you know you are not doing it. You are doing it half-heartedly. You are not doing it faithfully as unto the Lord. You want to repent of all that today and ask the Lord for mercy and ask the Lord for grace. And you want to put upon you the mind of Christ, the daily, the meekness of Christ, the diligence of Christ, the integrity of Christ, the newness of heart and life like Christ. You want to put that on, knowing fully well that the God we are serving is the God of all knowledge. And you want to do everything to please the Lord wholeheartedly, faithfully, so that on the last day you receive a well done instead of a judgment, a damnation, a condemnation from the Lord. I pray the Lord will help us that as we labor for Him, our work will bring rewards. Reward your own heart and reward in all eternity. Let us pray. Let us pray and commit ourselves to the hands of the Lord. And ask the Lord that the Lord himself will help you. That your labor for the Lord. You want to do it faithfully unto the Lord. The work you do, do it faithfully. By, the, by our God, actions are way. There are consequences, my brother. There are consequences, my sister. If you just, just, you just do the work of God half-heartedly, your mind is not there, your heart is not there, you hear the word of God, and yet you don't, just, you don't take it as the word of God, you take it as the word of man. That's, kind, that's the thing we are talking. Those things, your actions, they have consequences. When you allow pride in your life, arrogance in your life now, nobody can talk to you, you do your own thing. That's being arrogant, you know, no leadership over you, no, you don't listen to instructions, you don't carry instructions out, you want to do your own thing, that's being arrogant. Why don't you repent of all these things and have the mind of Christ? You may know more than the pastor. You may have money more than the pastor. You may have qualification more than the pastor. But that's your leader that the Lord has placed over you. You want to humble yourself. You want to pray that the Lord himself will help you. Don't allow pride to destroy your life, my brother. Don't allow arrogance to destroy your life, my sister. Let's be humble. Let's be meek. Let's have the character, the mind of Christ. Let's know that this God we are serving is the God of all knowledge. He knows the thought of our heart. He knows the intent of our heart. And whatever thing we do, we want to do it as unto the Lord. Doing it, pleasing the Lord. Knowing fully well that on the last day of the Lord, we will receive a reward. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's repent. Whatever thing we've done in the time past that does not glorify God, repent of it. And commit yourself to the hands of the Lord today. And ask the Lord that the Lord himself will help you. We give you the grace to be humble. To be lonely in heart. Serving the Lord with all humility of heart and sincerity of purpose. So that on that last day, you receive a reward from the Lord. Knowing that by him, actions are weighed.